Hello, high level listeners. Welcome to episode four of season two of our advanced English podcast series. Today, we're going to give you some high level English about taking the bus to work or taking the bus in general, really. Everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. If you are brand new and this is your first time here, hello and welcome to High Level Listening. I'm Kat, the American English voice and teacher here alongside Mark, the British voice all the way from the UK. Together, we created High Level Listening to help you take your English to the next level with a side by side, with a side by side perspective of American and British English. Like always, if you want to join us as a member, you can do that and get PDF transcripts of every single episode. So you can take those PDFs and study offline or study at your own pace. Members also get exclusive discounts on things like our season one study pack courses and other bonuses as well. So just as we've been doing in our advanced vocabulary episodes, we will read two short scripts about our experiences taking the bus with advanced vocabulary and expression. Mine will feature more American phrases and Mark's will be more in a British style. Then after our scripts, we'll give you a breakdown of each line, explaining the interesting vocabulary, grammar, expressions, and sharing a bit of our culture along the way. Okay, so let's get started. I'll ask Kat the lead-in question. How was your bus ride to work this morning? So I've got the live tracking bus schedule through an app on my phone, which is great since the buses where I live are a bit sporadic. Sometimes they turn up, sometimes they don't. When the bus finally does show up, I have a physical card in hand that I tap on the scanner at the front. The bus fare is pretty cost-effective, and when I'm low on credits, I can add cash to the card at basically any convenience store. Since I'm at the start of the line, the bus is never crowded, so I grab my favorite seat in the middle by the exit doors. After I take my seat, I usually attempt to read or study, but if I'm bored, I usually just scroll through videos on my phone. As we get closer to my stop, I press the button to signal the driver, then they open up the back doors and I hop off. All right, so Mark will share a very similar experience with different vocabulary and a a little bit of a different experience riding his bus. Let's ask Mark. How was your bus ride to work this morning? The buses around my area are fairly reliable. They come on the hour, then again at half past, and they usually show up on time. When I get on, they've got this little app for your phone, so I just scan it at the front and walk on. I always recommend getting the weekly or the monthly pass on the app because it cuts down the cost by quite a lot. Otherwise, the daily fares can add up quite quickly. My stop is at the beginning of the route, so the bus is usually quite empty, but I always leave the front seats free for elderly passengers, people with disabilities or parents with their prams. Once I've found a seat, I often end up just flicking through videos on my phone or just staring out the window. And when we reach it, My stop, I press the bell, walk to the front, thank the driver, and hop off. Okay, so those are our two scripts, and like we promised, now we'll go through each line, explaining, giving more examples about any useful vocabulary or phrases. So we'll start at the beginning of the script. Uh, Kat, when does the bus usually come? So I've got the live tracking bus schedule through an app on my phone which is great since the buses where I live are a bit sporadic. Sometimes they turn up, sometimes they don't. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the live tracking bus schedule. Now, I actually really do like this as an app on my phone because where I live, we kind of have a time schedule, but sometimes there's traffic in the city. I I live at the end of the bus line, so... If somebody gets held up in the city, I don't know when they're coming. I don't know when the buses are coming. But now we've got this live tracking. So live tracking, tracking is following something. And live tracking means that we are currently following the bus. That means that the bus is giving off a bit of a signal and we know exactly when the next bus is coming. So even though they don't come at exact times during the day, 
I can check my app and say, oh, there's a bus in 20 minutes or, oh, the bus is coming in five minutes. We should leave. This is live tracking the bus schedule. Now, I wanted to mention that I have an app on my phone. An app is an application or a program that we use on our phone. All the little icons, all the little pictures, each one is an app. So I track my bus through an app on my phone, which is great since the buses where I live are a bit sporadic. Sporadic means that we don't know when they're coming. Sometimes they come, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they turn up, sometimes they don't. So sporadic is we're not really sure when, when they're coming or what time they're coming. Sometimes they don't come at all. Then we have a good phrasal verb here, to turn up. Sometimes they turn up, sometimes they don't. To turn up means to show up to arrive, or to come. Okay, so all of these mean the same thing. The bus turns up, the bus shows up, the bus arrives, the bus comes. All right, Mark, what about you? When does the bus usually come? The buses around my area are fairly reliable. They come on the hour, then again at half past, and they usually show up on time. So my experience is quite opposite to Kat's. Yeah. Uh, she said the buses were quite sporadic or random, but the buses around my area are fairly reliable. So reliable means I can rely on them. They arrive at the correct time. They're not usually late, so I can trust them and I don't waste my time with them. One slightly more British word here is fairly, fairly reliable. The buses around my area are fairly reliable. Fairly means quite. So if it's fairly common, it's quite common. If it's fairly reliable, it's quite reliable. British people do say both, but I feel like it's more common to hear fairly in the UK. Do people use this word in the States that much? It's fairly interesting. Uh, you know, it's funny. I feel like we use it in the opposite way. It's not quite. We use fairly maybe a little bit. You know, it's fairly interesting. I, I kind of thought it meant more that it's not that interesting. You know, oh, it's fairly interesting. It's okay. It's not. So yeah, maybe we right. use it in a little bit of a different way. Fair enough. So it's sort of a low quite. Yeah. And the is a high we just quite. Don't, <laughs> right. We just don't use it very often. Fair enough. Well, the buses around my area are fairly reliable. They come on the hour. And then again at half past. So there are two times. There are two buses per hour. One on the hour. On the hour is when the minute hand is 12. So on the hour is nine o'clock exactly. 10 o'clock exactly. Or 11 o'clock exactly. So that is on the hour. Maybe the meeting starts on the hour. So that's at nine, at 10, zero, zero. And then if you learned the British way of telling time at school, you might know <laughs> half past. Half past is 9.30. Half past nine is 9.30. Half past 10 is 10.30. Half past 11 is 11.30. Because this is every hour, I don't need to say the hour. I can just say half past because it's a regular schedule. So there are two buses per hour on the hour at nine and half past at 9.30. So they come on the hour and then again at half past. Uh, you might also hear the news on the radio. If you listen to the radio mm. while you drive, there's news, a news update on the hour, every hour. So you might hear that phrase on the radio. And they usually show up on time. Yeah, as Kat said in her script, they turn up sporadically. Here I've said they show up. The word up is uh, has the meaning here. Up means arrive, or up means to approach. Uh, I think we used this phrasal verb in our last episode, where you turn up at work or park up because you arrive or you approach. So the bus shows up, the bus arrives. It shows up at nine, or I waited for the bus, but it didn't show up. So it didn't arrive, didn't come. But usually they're fairly reliable. So 
In your experience, how do you pay the bus fare? Okay, so the bus fare, F-A-R-E, the bus fare is the price of the ticket. Sometimes it, the bus fare changes. Maybe for young kids, the fare is free. Students, disabled people, older people, they might get a discount, a discounted fare, which means that their price changes. So the fare can change based on the person. Now, most adults have a standard fare, which is the normal ticket price with no discounts. And basically, when the bus finally does show up, I have a physical card in hand that I tap on the scanner at the front. So when the bus finally does show up, that means that, remember, the buses are a little sporadic. Some of them are delayed. Some of them come back to back. We don't always know when they're coming. I have a physical card in hand. Now, it is funny to think that I, I do say this word more often, a physical card, because it's so common now to just use a digital card or a digital code. Um, I think Mark is going to use a QR code. So we're using, if you're using something on your phone, this is digital. But if you have a physical card, it is a card that you can hold and touch and feel in your hand. So I have a physical card in hand that I tap on the scanner at the front. The scanner is the machine that reads my card. We could call it a scanner or a card reader. It reads the card and it takes away the fare on my bus card. So when the bus finally does show up, when it finally does arrive, I have a physical card in hand. Now, I was thinking about this, Mark, the reason, you know, because I can say in my hand, but I feel like the phrase in hand means I'm ready to use it. OK, I've got my phone in hand. I am ready to use it if I need to. I've got my bus card in hand ready to use. Do you feel that way, too? Because um, if I just say I have something in my hand that's just physically sitting there, you know, I have my phone in my mm -hmm. hand. But if I have my phone in hand, I feel like I'm really, I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to use it. Yeah, like I might approach the counter, money in hand. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to give the money. Or I approach the bar, money in hand. I'm ready to give the money like quickly. Like I know the drill. I know the process. I'll give it to you. My actual first thought was like an old movie, like a cowboy showed up, gun in hand, mm. <laughs> like ready to shoot. Or something, yeah. that was my yeah. first thought. But yeah, <laughs> okay. more pedestrian examples. Your money in hand, card in hand, yes. uh, come here, phone in hand. It's mm -hmm. ready. Now, if I have my physical bus card, then I just need to tap. Okay, sometimes you set the card on the reader or you tap the card. That's quite common uh, if you have a physical card in hand. We just touch it very lightly, tap it. Now, what about you, Mark? How do you pay the bus fare? When I get on, they've got this little app for your phone. So I just scan it at the front and walk on. So, yeah, this, uh, in my example, ooh, I'm going to use my phone. So they've got this little app. They've got this little app for your phone. Uh, they is the bus company. So mm -hmm. the bus company made an app. And I called it the little app. They've got this little app. And the word little, it, it's not physically big or small. Uh, I mean, it's simple. Mm -hmm. A little app is a simple app or it's very basic. Maybe you download it and there are two buttons. It's like pay or charge your account. Mm -hmm. Like it's a little app. It's very quick to download and it's very not basic. complex, very simple. Yeah, I agree. Right, exactly. Uh, so you might hear this in other contexts like oh, there's a, a little document you have to sign. A document is A4 size, but the text on it is very simple. So it, it's a little document. It's simple. Or oh, there's, a, there's a little email you have to print. A little email is, you know, the same size, but it doesn't have a lot of information. It's a very basic thing. So something very basic can be little, just a little app on your phone. So yeah, like Kat said, scan 
I scan it at the front. On British buses too, there is a scanner or a reader. You open the app, scan your phone, beep, and then it takes the fare from your account and you can get on. Um, I actually use two different words for entering the bus and they are a tiny bit different. When I get on. So get on is to step onto the bus through the main doors. So the bus arrives, the doors open and I get on and I'm standing in front of the driver. Then I can scan my app and then I walk on. So get on is to enter the door. Walk on is to turn and walk through the bus to the seats. The reason it's two words is because I could get on the bus, try to scan my app, but I don't have any money or my account is empty. So I have to get off. I can't pay. I have to get off again. But I could get on, scan my app. It's accepted. Then I can walk on the bus. Then I can walk through it to find my seat near the back. So yeah, I think there's a little difference between those two words. Okay, uh, in the States, is it cheap to ride the bus? I would say the bus fare is pretty cost effective. And when I'm low on credits, I can add cash to the card at any convenience store. So is it cheap to ride the bus? Well, the word cheap, I would say when we say the word cheap, we think, you know, oh, it's 25 cents or it's a dollar. But things aren't as cheap as they used to be. Maybe you're paying four or five dollars to get on the bus. Now, someone might think, wow, four or five dollars, that is not cheap. But when you think of, OK, well, if I get in a car, pay gas, drive all the way to the place, it's going to cost me much more money than that. So I would say this word, it's cost effective. It's cost effective. This is a good work vocabulary phrase as well. Uh, the bus fare is pretty cost effective. So normally it might take me $20 to go from my house to my office, but the bus ticket is about $4. So that's a much better price and it is cost effective. Even though it's not cheap per se, it's still saving me a lot of money. It is cost effective. And when I'm low on credits, when I'm low on credits, that means that I don't have enough money on my card to pay for the next bus fare. Now, why do I use the word credits? Credits. Because when I, when I go to the convenience store and I ask to put money or put cash on my card, I can't use that as cash anymore. It's on my card as a credit. I really can't take this card and just use it like a Visa or MasterCard. It only works with my bus fare. So it's like we've kind of changed into the bus fare currency. So we call these credits, credits to your account, right? You can't really use that as money before, money anymore, but now you can use them as a credit or a bus fare credit. Now, um, I was thinking about this earlier because in America, we actually don't use public transportation nearly as often as they do in the UK. I was thinking, do we use the word top up? Top up. And I use it quite often because uh, when I go to the UK, I use it all the time. Top up the card, top up the gas tank, top up this, top up that. But when I was really thinking about it, we don't use it as often in America. I would often say add cash to the card, add money to the account. When you um, renew your phone bill and you need to top up your phone, in America, I would probably say add money to my phone, add money to my card. That's probably more common, even though I love the phrase to top up, <laughs> to top something up. So if I'm low on credits, if I'm low on money, I can add cash to my bus card. So I go to the convenience store, go to the gas station. I say, hi, I need to add some money to my card. I give them some money. 
they have a little reader, they give me more credits and more money on my bus card. Yeah, I think you're right about using top up more in the UK. Mm -hmm. I might go into a shop to top up my phone. If yeah. I'm running low on data, I have no more gigabytes or no mm -hmm. more megabytes. I need to top up. Yeah, if my balance is low, I can go to a shop and top up. Yeah, so that is a word we use. I love, I love the phrase, but then I was thinking, you know, I drive my car most of the time in the United States, so it's not as common for me to take public transportation. I don't always live in the city either, and the city is where you would most commonly take a bus or the tram or other parts of uh, the public transportation system. But because I live usually in the suburbs or my friends and family live outside of the city, it's just more common to use a car. So I haven't really had to add any money to a card in a while. So even though I love the phrase top up, Americans would probably say add money or add cash to a card. Would you top up with gas or petrol? Would you top up I the would car fill up. or would you fill up? I would fill up the car. I would fill up the car. I mean, if you, yeah, top it up really just sounds so British. Uh, top it up, like put it to the tippity, tippity top, right? Oh, top yeah. it up. You can even say that in a bar. If they uh -huh. pour you a drink and it's only this full, you can be like, top it up, top it up. You can give I'll it back it, so they it, give you pour it to the right top. To the pour it to the top. Yeah. Top it mm -hmm. up, mate. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have it, but I, I really do think that it's much more common in British English. All right, so let's keep going. And uh, is it cheap to ride the bus in the UK, Mark? I always recommend getting the weekly or monthly pass on the app because it cuts down the cost by quite a lot. Otherwise, the daily fares can add up quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So in answer to your question, is it cheap to ride the bus? Not really. Uh, it should mm -hmm. be cheaper. And it's a thing a lot of British people complain about. So to save money, I recommend getting the weekly or monthly pass. Good idea. Uh, a, yeah, a pass can be a ticket that is valid for a period of time. So a weekly pass is a ticket valid for seven days. You can use the same pass for seven days as many times as you like. Or the oh. monthly pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's valid for 30 days. And okay. you can use the same pass again and again and again for one month and then it expires and you buy another one. So I recommend this usually because the weekly or monthly passes are cheaper. It cuts down the cost by quite mm -hmm. a lot. So cut with scissors or cut. If you cut down, you reduce. And this is a phrase we often use with money. If you cut down the cost, you reduce the cost. You know, I reduce how much I spend. So with trains in the UK, if you book in advance, you can cut down the cost. And if you use the app for the buses, you can cut down the cost as well. Otherwise, so I'm trying to give you some advice. I recommend the monthly or the weekly pass. Otherwise, otherwise means if you don't, like if you don't listen to me. Are you going to I'm threaten to me? Yeah, right. I'm going to tell you the consequences. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah, the daily fares can add up quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So you should get the monthly or weekly pass. Otherwise, the daily fares can add up quite quickly. So the daily fares are single uh, tickets you can use once or only for one day. And unfortunately, these are often the most expensive in the UK. So these daily fares can add up quite quickly. Uh, add up means the total amount after a week or after a month is actually quite expensive. Uh, a bus ticket alone, one bus ticket, is not expensive. It's two pounds. But if you buy one twice a day and you take the bus from Monday to Friday, suddenly you've spent like 20 pounds or 25 pounds or more. It's like a coffee as well. Maybe you buy one coffee, it's only £2.50, fine. But drink two a day, Monday to Friday, that's £25. It adds up and it can surprise you. Uh, I also think of subscriptions. Netflix, Disney+, Plus, HBO, 
When you buy them, it's only ten ninety nine. Oh yeah, that's not much. But when you add them all together, they add up, and suddenly you're spending a lot of money, or more than you expected. So, the daily fares can add up quite quickly, and that's why I recommend the weekly or monthly pass, because it helps you cut down on costs. So, in the States, are the buses crowded? So, since I'm at the start of the line, the bus is never really that crowded. So, I grab my favorite seat in the middle by the exit doors. I'm at the start of the line. So, there are bus routes or bus lines. That is the path that the bus takes from point A to point B. Point A is the start of the line, and point B is the end of the line. Now, usually what happens is the bus will simply turn around. So at the end of the line, most people have gotten off the bus by then. So as the bus turns around, it's usually pretty empty. So since I'm at the start of the line, the bus is never crowded. So I grab my favorite seat. Now, physically, if I grab something, then I'm, you know, taking it in my hand. I'm grabbing it. But if you're grabbing a seat or grabbing a bite to eat, you're usually going to do something very quickly. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a seat. So I'm going to just go sit down quickly. I grab my favorite seat in the middle by the exit doors. Now, it's pretty common that the front of the bus is where you would pay, scan your card, scan your digital card or your physical card up at the front. And then usually there's there are other exits. There are other doors in the middle and sometimes even in the back of the bus where you can exit. So we call them the exit doors. So I grab my favorite seat in the middle of the bus by the exit doors. In the middle by the exit doors. What about you, Mark? Are the buses usually crowded? My stop is at the beginning of the route, so the bus is usually quite empty. But I always leave the front seats free for elderly passengers, people with disabilities, or parents with their prams. So I actually have the same uh, similar experience as Kat. My stop is at the beginning of the route. This might be a British American pronunciation difference. So O, sorry, R, R O, U T E, route. The bus route. Uh, Is that how you say it? In the States? I say the bus route. I say the bus route. Honestly, I can think even in my hometown, people say it differently. I think it just depends on where your parents are from and what your parents used to say at home. We say both. Mm, okay, fair enough. Uh, in the UK, it's only route, the bus okay. route. Uh, mm-hmm. Same thing with your Wi Fi box. That's your router. So same uh, and router. Almost the router. Same. Right. Aha. Uh-huh. So my stop is at the beginning of the route. So sometimes I get to the bus and the bus driver turns off the bus. The engine is off and he's actually like smoking a cigarette in front because he's waiting to start his journey. Mm. So sometimes Mm -hmm. I get on uh, before the bus even starts the engine. So the bus is usually quite empty. An empty bus doesn't have any passengers or no passengers. So... I have the whole bus. I can sit wherever I want, but I always leave the front seats free. (laughs) A free seat is an empty seat. This isn't free about money or anything. A free seat is empty with no one in it. So you might hear someone say, sorry, is this seat free? And they're not talking about money. They are saying, is this seat empty? Can I take it? Can I use it? Or is this table free? Can I sit at this table? So I leave the seats free. And yes, in the UK, the front seats, the ones closest to the driver, are usually a little bit bigger. There's usually a bit more empty space. And that is for older people or elderly passengers. People with disabilities, so they're in wheelchairs, uh, mobile chairs, or they have canes. So again, they have a wide space so you can fit two, sometimes three wheelchairs in the area or parents with prams. 
Prams might be another British word. Do you know what I mean by prams? Yes, only because I visited the UK. We would say a stroller. A stroller. Stroller, right. Yeah, so it is uh, a little thing on wheels. It's like a bed or a chair on wheels. And you put your young child in there and you can push them around. It's easier because maybe the child is too young to walk or tired. Uh, so yeah, there's a space for those prams or strollers in the front as well. So if you get on an empty bus in the UK, uh, you should probably sit in the middle or near the back. You should leave the front seats for the people who really need them. That is a common courtesy and that is good etiquette. If the bus is really full and there's only one seat left and it's at the front, okay, you can sit in that seat. But if an elderly person or a person with a pram comes on, you should probably stand up and let them have the seat. That's common courtesy. Okay, back to the States. Uh, you're on the bus now. What do you do on the bus? So after I take my seat, I usually attempt to read or study. But if I'm bored, I usually just scroll through videos on my phone. So after I take my seat, okay, everyone take your seats, take your seats. That means that you find a seat that you want and you sit down. After I take my seat, I usually attempt to read or study. If you attempt to do something, you do try. You make an effort, try to read, you try to study. But if I'm bored, I usually just scroll through videos on my phone. So um, I would like to, in a perfect world, study or read in my free time while I'm riding on the bus. But sometimes I'm just bored. You know, sometimes I'm bored. Sometimes studying is boring. Sometimes reading is boring. So I will just scroll through videos on my phone. Now, I want to mention that we play games on our phones. We open an app on our phone. We read something on our phone. We often use the word on my phone. Scroll through videos on my phone. Open an app on my phone. Look at the app on my phone. So it's just a very common phrase that we use when talking about using things, opening up things on the phone, on the computer. Now, I wish I could study more. I do like studying on the bus, but there are just times when I just don't feel like it. I just want to scroll on my phone instead. What about you? What do you do on the bus? Once I've found a seat, I often end up just flicking through videos on my phone or just staring out the window. So yes, I end up in the same situation. I often end up just flicking through videos. So end up is a useful phrase here. I often end up. I chose this phrase because before I got on the bus, I had this big plan. On the bus, I have 20 or 25 minutes free. So I think, yes, okay, I will be productive in this time. I don't have to drive. I don't have to think about the road. I can just use this time productively. So maybe I want to read the news. Uh, I should read a book or I should send some messages. I should reply to my friends or something. But I end up doing something lazy and easy instead. So if I end up, I do something different from my plan, different from what I expected or different from what I wanted. So I had this great idea to have a productive bus ride, but because I'm tired, maybe I'm bored, I end up flicking through videos. To flick is to scroll. You flick with your thumb. So next video, next one, next one, flick through my phone or just staring out the window. The preposition's important here, staring out the window. Uh, you might also hear stare at something. But if I stare at the window, I'm looking at the glass, the thick glass, maybe that scratched dirty glass on a bus. But that's not what I want to see. I'm staring out the window. I'm looking outside at the scenery, the buildings, the cars and the people. 
So staring out the window is looking at the passing scenery, but staring at would be literally looking at the glass, which is much less nice. So I want to stare out the window. Okay, last step. How do you get off the bus? So we get closer to my stop. I press the button to signal the driver. Then they open up the back doors and I hop off. As we get closer to my stop, I don't want to press the button too early because then the bus will stop and maybe it's the stop before I want to get off the bus. So as we get closer to my stop, I press the button to signal the driver. Now, um, in some old buses, they didn't really have a working button. So you just kind of had to signal the driver physically with your hands. But now it's much easier. You press the button. It says stop. It says upcoming stop. And that tells the driver. It sometimes even goes ding, ding. And it tells the driver that they need to stop. Because sometimes if there's no one getting on or off the bus, the driver will just kind of fly through the bus stop. They don't have to stop at every single stop if there's no one waiting. So you have to signal them. But usually what's quite common in modern buses is pressing a button that signals the driver that you need to stop. Then they stop. They open up the back doors. It's pretty uncommon to go out the front. Sometimes you can on the really big buses, but it's much more common to exit in the middle doors or the back doors. They open up the back doors and I, I hop off. I hop off. So I can get off the bus, of course. I think of getting up on the bus, getting on the bus, kind of, you know, that step up, getting on the bus, the step down, getting off the bus. But if I'm just moving quickly and uh, I'm on my way, I can just hop off, jump off. I think jumping off really feels like, oh, gosh, I have to. Oh, my gosh, I really have to hurry and just like throw myself <laughs> off the bus. So just a little hop off is just a small jump. So you don't feel like you're in a, you know, an action movie where you're trying to save your, your life and you're explodes. jumping off yeah, the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so we can hop off the bus, get off the bus, walk off the bus as well. And then I go and do what I need to do after I get off the bus. Now, what about you, Mark? How do you get off the bus? When we reach my stop, I press the bell walk to the front, thank the driver, and hop off. So there are four steps. When we reach my stop. So reach my stop. Reach is another word for arrive at the stop or go to my stop. You will hear reach instead of arrive in many cases, like uh, as my routine, I reach the office at 8.30. If you have an old GPS or a sat nav that speaks to you. When you arrive, it will say, you have reached your destination. Mm -hmm. So reach is arrive. And I mean, right now in this YouTube video, we are reaching the end of our class. We're arriving at the end. So when I reach my stop, I press the bell. Uh, the bell is not literally a ding, 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 ding bell. It's a button. But sometimes... Uh, you press the button and it makes the bell sound. It goes ding. Uh, sometimes, I don't know if it's a real bell or if it's an electronic sound because they sound different on different buses. So that makes me think that it is a real bell and on one <laughs> bus it's a bit broken, but the other one is a new bus, so it sounds good. But yeah, it's the bell, but it's actually a big red button that says dot in big letters or sometimes it says press in big letters. So you press that button, you press the bell. The bus driver hears the bell and stops at the next stop. Uh, then I walk to the front. Again, I'm walking through the seats, between the seats down the middle. And it's considered polite in the UK to say thank you to your driver. You should. When you get off the bus, just say thanks or cheers. Cheers means thank you. It doesn't mean goodbye. It means thank you. So say cheers, thanks, and get off. The bus driver might not reply, 
but it's just a common courtesy. So thank the driver and hop off. Just like Kat said, hop is a little jump. Uh, depends on the bus, but sometimes the gap or the step and the street is quite big. So it, mm. it feels like a jump. It feels like a hop. Sometimes it's like a foot. <laughs> uh, so it feels like a little hop. So maybe that's why we say hop off. Okay, so there we are. We hope that you learned some great new vocabulary and expressions about taking the bus. Let us know in the comments what it's like when you take the bus in your country or your city and see if you can use some of these new expressions and phrases that we used in our class today. We do read and reply to all of our comments, so why not use it as a chance to practice your English? Yes, and once again, if you want a PDF transcript of this episode, with every word, every example, and every explanation in one file that you can take offline, then you can click the join button below, uh, or you can check the link in the description and get your hands on the PDF transcript of this episode and all the previous ones too. Thank you, everyone. We will see you again for another advanced episode very soon. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.